If you'd like to know how to go from zero to 50 properties and generate over £300,000 a year net profit using properties that you don't even have to own, then this video is definitely for you. Welcome to my YouTube channel. My name's Liam Ryan. And um, if you're new to the channel, please hit subscribe and the notification bell. And in today's video, we are gonna be heading out to Romford and meeting Hadjir, one of my personal graduates. She's been working with me now for just over two years, and that is correct. She's done over 50 property deal. Okay, brilliant. I'm so excited. We've made it to Romford, which was only about a 20, 25 minute drive from my house down in Chelmsford. And we have arrived at Hadjir's property. Uh, Hadjir is one of my graduates. It's property deal number 50. And uh, hey, let's just go in and check out this property and um, hear all from Hadjir about how she started, how she's scaled. If she can do it, you can definitely do it. Let's go. Here it is. Hi, Jay. Hey, good to how see you. You all right? I am good. How good are you? Good stuff. Wow, we're here. Welcome. Property number 50. Great. I am so, so pleased to be here. It is amazing to be in your 50th property, which Thanks, is Liam. a rent-to-rent -rent serviced accommodation unit. So when you got the keys for this property, you know, honestly, how did that make you feel? And how are you feeling now knowing that you've got 50 high cash flowing properties in your portfolio? Uh, thanks, Liam. Thanks for having me. Um, it feels great to have 50 properties. I can't really believe it. Um, the business just, you know, scaled from property number one to number 50. Um, when I was at number 49, I was like, you know, I need one more just to, you know, <laughs> to round it up. Um, it feels great. It feels awesome. Uh, I have a team around me. Uh, I was a one man, uh, one woman band, I would say. <laughs> you, look, uh, you look like a woman for sure. <laughs> <laughs> and um, now I have a team around me. We all help each other. Great. We all do work. So number fifty. It's a big achievement. It's it's a real big achievement. So anyone that's watching this now, I know you're a massive inspiration. You're a really big part of the Assets for Life community. So there's people watching this now that have not got into property. They want to get into property. They're a bit confused. They don't know what strategy to go for. Can they get the deals? Do they need a great credit score? They've got to raise lots of money. A lot of people have got a lot of questions that they need answering. So I'll tell you what, let's take our audience back to the beginning. Yeah. So what were you doing before you decided to become a uh, property investor? Right. Um, so back in 2018, I was a shop floor assistant. Mm. I used to sell perfume uh, at one of the uh, shopping centers. And uh, I decided I wanted more, mm. um, not just to be a nine to five person. I wanted to save a lot more. I wanted to be able to have the financial freedom, the time freedom, be able to spend the time that I want to go on vacation when I wanted to, uh, not really having to, you know, submit some notice to be able to go somewhere. So that was when I said I needed something on the side and business sounded like a great opportunity. So, so as a shop assistant, what would you say was your, what was you able to save a month as a, as a you know, shop assistant working nine to five? Right, um, maximum I could say was 300, 400 pounds a month. Wow. Um, that was, you know. And that's basically probably starving yourself. <laughs> well, not quite, but you know. <laughs> You know, you know, you know, that's obviously still not a bad amount to save. Yeah. But obviously not where you wanted to be, right? Absolutely not. Yeah. No, okay. you, you don't want that. I mean, I, yes, I was comfortable, you know, just going out and spending the money and just trying to save a little bit on the side. But then you just have to do your calculations at the end of the month and wait for your paycheck. Yeah. You know, it's, so you definitely felt like you were living paycheck to paycheck. Yeah and you know you couldn't really do the things that you wanted to do hence wanting to get into property correct so how did you actually come across me and jay and the assets for life team how did that happen right um it's a bit of a funny story actually <laughs> i met you by accident uh i walked into the wrong room uh in a in a hotel okay <laughs> uh, i was meant to go to a complete business strategy and uh, there was two in the same hotel in central london um then i I asked at the reception, they told me, yeah, it's there. 
I walked and, you know, just came in, many people sitting down, so I grabbed the seat and I said, this is not what I came for. <laughs> but then it did make it did make sense, like everything you were saying, like, oh, wow. And I fell in love with it there and then. Right. So um, I was grabbed, I, you know, taking notes, grabbed a pen and paper straight then, you know, just taking notes. And um, at the end of the day, I said, I want, this, this is what yeah. I want. Okay, brilliant. The, the good thing is that um, as Hajir, back then, no diploma in property, uh, no, not a lot of money on the side, no, not a huge credit score. Um, I could jump into property investing yeah. without really having to have all that. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, great. Yeah, good. So that's why you came and met me. Uh, you jumped in some of my advanced training. Yeah. You, you spent three days with me at the Property Millionaire Bootcamp, which was amazing. Yeah. So uh, once you came to the bootcamp, you'd done your advanced training. What strategy did you decide was going to be right for you? Right. Um, rent to rent felt like the best strategy to me. And again, like I said, I didn't have a lot of money to start with. Uh, if I wanted to go into development, I would need a huge money. Um, probably not now that I know how to get funding. Yeah, you, you, can, you can use JV funding. <laughs> yeah, but at the yeah. time, yeah, obviously when you do development, you need to find a lot more money. Yeah. Um, when you do rent to rent, you don't even own the property. So rent yeah. to rent. Well, you know what? What is rent to rent? So explain to the viewers what is rent to rent. Right. So rent to rent is when you get um, a property, you rent a property from a landlord on a guaranteed rent. Uh, you then take care of the property, uh, the maintenance, and it depends on your contract with the landlord, and go out and rent it out as a, as a room let to professionals, uh, contractors, or as a service to accommodation, means like you have guests instead of tenants within your property. Great, good. So, yeah. so it's a high cash flowing model, you can scale, obviously you've certainly scaled in the last couple of years. You haven't got to find big deposit pots. Yeah. You don't have to go through the buying process. Yeah. You can get started even if your credit score's low. Absolutely. Or, you know, you're not in the best financial position. Because to get, say, on average, a rent to rent deal over the line, mm -hmm. what is the uh, initial investment capital that you need on average for a rent to rent deal? Right. So on average, you, um, from 2,000 to 5K, yeah, to 5,000 right. pounds. Um, depends on the if, you if there is any deposit involved, if you need any furniture, if you need to add any, you know, cosmetic work to the property. Um, most of the properties are already ready, especially if you get them from agents rather than landlords. Yeah. Um, so it's, and it's easier to negotiate that to the land with the landlord for him to provide you all the, the necessary equipment. Right. Um, and the best thing also is that you can actually start with zero money. Great, good. Um, in some of my deals, I've negotiated a month free. Wow. Um, right. It's like a rent free period. Yeah. So technically, no deposit involved and no first month you involved. You can just get the keys straight away. Straight yeah. away. Yeah. Get people in, get their deposit, get um, the first month rent from the people you, you, know, you have in, in your property and then pay and, your then, and, then, and, then, and then pay the fees from there. But uh, obviously that's ideal situation. Yes. But other than that, it's very, very low capital. And you know, I'm not being funny, if you've got a deal, say on a five year term, that's gonna generate 12 to 15,000 pounds a year, yeah. and all that stopping someone is just 2,000 pounds, you can get very creative. You know, Absolutely. investors, joint venture partners, Credit friends, cards. family members, leverage cheap money, yeah. you know, business loan. You know, there's so many ways in which people can get into this strategy. So um, talk us through your first deal. Like, where did you get the deal from? Mm -hmm. Where is the deal? Yep. And give us the bottom line numbers on that first deal. Right, so the first deal I got was in Beaufort Park in London. Um, that was in 2019, February 2019. Um, it, honestly, it was just from people that I knew and then contractors that I knew and friends and this person recommends you to another and so on. So what did you do? Just start putting yourself out there? Yes. Started telling people who you were, yeah. what you'd done, obviously set your business up, became compliant, built your, your brand, and then it was just word of mouth. 
Absolutely. You know, you need to put yourself out there. You need yeah. to advertise yourself. People need to know what you do in order to be able for them to, you know, help. Or mm. um, at the end of the day, you're offering a service to people, so you're helping others. Um, landlords need their properties rented, and we need properties on our books, so it works in both ways. It's a win-win situation. Uh, so I got the property from the landlady, um, and uh, it was a two-bedroom flat uh, in in Beaufort Park. Um, and then I decided I wanted to do serviced accommodation with it. Um, okay, so serviced accommodation, that's like a hot word right now in property. Um, we know that it's one of the fastest growing, highest cash flow strategies. Correct. Uh, and it's working really well. But just for our viewers, what is serviced accommodation? Right, so serviced accommodation is when you get the property from the landlord. Also, guarantee the rent to the landlord every single month. Um, but instead of renting it on a, an ASD, a long-term contract, you have guests within your property. Um, so you put the property out on booking.com, Airbnb, and then people will you know, see it uh, and will book. So you've got things like holiday makers, staycations, Last um, um, couples on you know, little city breaks, weekends, yeah. uh, you know, couples. You've also got so uh, contractors. Contractors. Okay, great. Um, so now I have contractors in that same property. Um, the reason why is because London, as you know, is a three-month cap. So there is a three-month cap in London. Um, so we can only rent it for three months throughout the year. However, renting it to contractors, so you can always have a contract with a company. Uh, and as you know, London is big. There is people who come to stay in London for just a short period of time. Um, especially if there is the developments around the, the, yeah. the area, and there's always developments in London. Uh, so they come stay in groups for, if, if the electricians will stay for two weeks, and then there's the builders will stay for another, maybe three months. And so it's better for them to have a property where they can all stay together yeah. rather than just go to hotels. Yeah, great. Um, and yes, we have a contract on a nightly basis. They pay us guaranteed rent as well to us, and then they have their contractors in, okay, whether it's great. empty or full. Great, yes, yeah, so a contractor is a, you know, a market that you, you look towards. Um, your first deal, let's talk about the numbers in the first yeah. deal, yeah? Because it wasn't your biggest deal, At all, not no. necessarily your best deal, yeah. but it was your first deal. And, and what I say to people that I help and train, just get that first deal over the line. You know, it doesn't have to be the best deal in the world, but you're going to learn a lot through the process. So what were the numbers on the first deal, i.e. how much rent are you paying to the land landlord? Mm -hmm. And then roughly, what, what's your net profit on that per month? Right. So um, back then, I was doing it myself on a, I, I put it on booking.com and Airbnb and so on. Um, so I was not getting a lot, I was just getting 400 pounds because I wanted it. I didn't have reviews, I didn't have, it was my first property, people didn't know me, you know, and now people do look at the reviews. Um, so I put the price a little, a lot lower than the market price just so I could get my first, you know, and I wanted to prove to myself that it did work and I wanted yeah. to prove to myself that actually I can do it as well. Yeah. So I could do anything and everything just to make it work. Um, I only had £400, give or take, um, a month. Well, that's just under just under uh, £5,000 a year. A year. Yeah, that's pretty good still. For a property that you don't own, mm -hmm. it's your first one. Yeah. You're building your confidence, you're building your reputation. You know, to get an extra five grand a year in is pretty good going. Yeah. yeah. I was still a shop floor assistant at that time. Right. And 400 was like... So you set this like... up initially part-time. Yeah. yeah. How, how many hours a week were you, you know, investing in your property business part time at the start? Right. At the start, I would say I was giving it about 15 to 20 hours. Okay. Uh, just marketing myself, putting myself out there, contacting people, you know, just um, having a list of agents and trying to contact them. Uh, walk into uh, local estate agencies. At that time, I was accepting anything and everything, anywhere. <laughs> now I'm more selective of my area. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, now I'm more selective of my area. I only operate about 
five, ten minutes away from my place. So you've kept it really local to where you are. Yes. That's great because you can scale. I see a lot of people do a scattergun approach. You know, they've got a deal in London, a deal in Essex, a deal in Manchester, a deal in Liverpool. Yeah. And I'm not saying that can't work, and I'm sure they're great deals, mm -hmm. but you want to be in an area where there's demand, where you can scale, and it doesn't take up a lot of your time. You know, you, you also want the freedom to do the things that you want to do, right? Correct. Um, uh, yes, at the beginning, I, was, I still had a little bit around London. Some in Hackney, Neasden, Edgware. Edra Road, so it was a little bit all over okay. the place. But then, you know, anything was a, yeah. any property was good to yeah. me, anything. So I wanted anything and everything. But yeah, I think being more selective is a lot better just to control your properties. Mm. If there's anything, you can just walk, you know, walk to the properties. Uh, I'm not saying don't get anything like I did, it yeah. helped me and it well, made me Well, you stayed within the London area, that's fine. True. You know, you wasn't all over the country, so you just jump on a tube and that's True. fine. You still stay, you still stayed localised. Yeah. So, when you got your first deal, how, how did that make you feel and did you notice a change in yourself? Just talk us through that process that you went through. Yeah, so there was a little bit of mistakes that I've done, obviously. Uh, but I had to learn from the mistakes. And um, the good thing is that I saw the money coming in. Yeah. Um, so that kept me going. And I said, you know, it does work. Um, all I have to do is just duplicate that, duplicate the results, probably do better. And the more I've done it, the easier it got. Mm. And, you know, it made a lot more sense. Uh, things became more natural. Uh, the beginning, for example, I used to stay in the properties for a few nights, just to have a feel, see what need what I need within the property. If if I needed to stay there, I always put myself in the shoes of a guest or a tenant. That's amazing, yeah. And see, if I am staying here, what would I need? Mm. Okay, I would need a microwave, I would need kettles, I would need, um, you know, uh, duvets, pillows, extra covers. Um, so things like this that, you know, sometimes you don't really think about. Uh, having extra of everything is a lot better than just you know, being tight, mm. um, having, you know, assist, like systemizing your keys, for example, your, your um, uh, check-in. Yeah, the check-in, systemizing all, all the process is a lot easier yeah. rather than just having to, you know, just meet the... the so, so really through that first deal and those first few deals, you really grew, you know, developed yeah. yourself as a professional relocations company, a yeah. property investor. Um, how long was it after deal number one that you got deal number two? It was a, a few months okay, after that. Great. Um, I, as you know, I had procrastinated a little yeah. bit. I don't know if it was just the, the beginner's luck, probably, yeah. to get that first property. I, said, I got a little bit... <laughs> like, oh my head and now it's okay. working. I got my first one. <laughs> yeah, well, you're excited and it's okay. You know, some people go and do two, three deals straight away. Yeah. Some people like to do one, get it systemized, get it processed, take their time. Yeah. So, how, how long was it before you got deal number two? And then in summer, in summer okay, when I got great. my second okay. deal. Um, actually, I got the second and then straight away, three, four, five. Excellent. So, it was from the same landlord, done really well with his first property, then three, four, five from the same landlord. And I, this is the, 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 the advice I give to everyone. Try to get a landlord that will give you many properties. And if not, we recommend you to another landlord because building that type of relationship is a lot more important mm. than the money you will get from any deal. Yeah. Um, yes, I can get a thousand pounds, but if that th that thousand pounds will give me ten thousand pounds yeah. more, it's a lot better. Yeah, build a relationship with the landlords. You know, um, <laughs> do 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 a good job. Make sure you pay the the, the, the contract on, on time. time. That's yes. really really important. Yes. So that's interesting. So it took a few months to get deal number two. Yeah. Then two, three, four came very quickly. Yeah. Let's fast forward to February 2020. Yeah. February March. How many deals did you have just before we went into the pandemic? So, just before we went into the, the pandemic, I had 12 properties on 12. my 12, excellent. So, from 12 to now. <laughs> so in a year, pretty much, there or thereabouts, yeah. just over a year, you've gone from 12 to 50. Yes. So you've took on 38 additional properties, properties yes. during a worldwide pandemic. Yeah. 
How the hell was that possible? Um, you know, I saw more opportunity. Um, and when you take when you take risks, there's always a reward. There's so many, there's a huge gap in the market. So many people were, or so many renter renters, they needed to return the properties to the landlords. Mm. Uh, so many people couldn't afford the rent, so the landlords had to take the properties back. Agents were desperate to rent the properties. Um, so I said, let me just- I'll take him. I'll take him. <laughs> yes, I'll offer you a little bit less yeah. than what you're expecting, but at least you have your yeah. property full. Yeah. Um, and, and I think that's really important, isn't it? Because, you know, as a rent to rent, you know, relocations company, property investor, we are actually serving and solving people's problems. Exactly. You know, if you've got a landlord that isn't receiving their rent and then you come in and give them guaranteed rent, it's absolutely good for you to get a deal, yep. they get a good deal, and then ultimately you, you, you make the difference. Brilliant. Cool. <laughs> well, you're a massive inspiration. Thank it's you. been lovely having you on the show today. Um, let, let's do another catch up at some point, you know, maybe in six yeah. or 12 months and see how you've grown. Um, but keep up the great work. Um, thanks for being part of the community. Love working with you. And uh, I know you've been a massive inspiration to all of our viewers. Let's give it, let's, let's hug it out. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Leo. Nice. Thank you very much. <laughs>